Hello, I'm Samantha and welcome to my sewing room where today I'm going to make a pair of 1940s tennis shorts from a vintage 40s pattern made by the Vintage Sewing Pattern Company. But first, I thought it would be fun to have a quick look through what women wore in the past to play tennis. Women started playing tennis in the 1860s, Victorian times, um, and they weren't playing it for the sport, they were playing it to meet as suitable men. You dressed as fashionably as possible in high neck dresses with uh, often a long train and a bustle skirt, corset of course, and uh, a skimmer hat held on with hat pins. So it must have been quite difficult running around playing tennis in those. Then in 1884, the first female Wimbledon champion, Maud Watson, wore a kind of white, kind of ivory white uh, tennis dress and this was the first time that tennis whites uh, became a thing. It's really easy to boil wash and keep clean which is why it's been so popular for undergarments. So these dresses were maybe not practical but they were things of beauty uh, and I've found a, a picture to show you. This is a dress from 1885. Lovely, not practical, but lovely bustle dress. Another little detail I found from an Edwardian tennis dress with some wonderful smocking. As time went on, more and more people uh, started to enjoy tennis. And uh, I found this lovely photograph from 1913 of a tennis party <laughs> that I'll put up on the screen. In 1905, May Sutton caused a stir at Wimbledon by rolling up her sleeves to reveal her elbows. It was the first time short sleeve blouses became a thing for women's tennis. 1920s, the French Wimbledon champion Suzanne Lenglen caused quite a stir by wearing separates for the first time rather than a dress. And not only separates, but a calf length skirt and a short sleeve blouse. She also wore a length of chiffon tied around her head as a headband. Another trendsetter in the 20s was the American Helen Wills Moody, picture of her with Suzanne Langland. And she also favoured calf length pleated skirts and blouses but it was the wonderful fashion designer Elsa Schiaparelli who really revolutionised tennis fashion and made it what it is today by introducing the divided skirt kind of like culottes. You can see here edition of Harper's Bazaar magazine a lovely pair of pleated shorts and it's an edition from 1947 and it is indeed pleated tennis shorts that I am going to make today. So I'm up in the loft at my cutting table. So this is just a reminder of what my 1940s tennis short pattern looks like. And I chose a fabric specially for the Platinum Jubilee of red, white and blue and Union Jack umbrellas in cotton. I did a mock-up and surprisingly the mock-up, the waistband was a little too large for me and it's, it's a 26 inch waist pattern and as much as I love to believe I'm a 26 inch waist I'm kind of not so I thought I'd just check uh, if I pleated everything correctly so, uh, you fold along the crease line which is marked on the pattern and there are two pleats that fold into the centre front. One pleat is on the side front and then there's another pleat on the uh, skirt front. Uh, so I've pinned those in place and I'm just checking the waistband. There are, there's a separate front and back waistband cut on the fold. And it does seem like, it seemed like the shorts were a little big for the waistband, but then can be nicer than a slightly loose fitting waistband. I decided to proceed anyway, pin out the pattern pieces. Um, I would say that the trickiest part of making a pleated uh, skirt or shorts is getting the waist uh, circumference right because every tiny adjustment you make, you have to obviously make to all the pleats. 
and even a very fine amount because you're talking eight pleats and all a tiny adjustment makes a big difference it gave me a new respect for how people do kilts so when i'm pinning out pattern pieces i like to show what everyone does you know if i can save any fabric um, i will so this was sent to me as a PDF pattern, which I printed out and um, sellotaped together and then cut out of an old bed sheet to do the mock-up. Um, I didn't film that part of the process because I thought it might be just too much for anyone of an excitable disposition. As I'm cutting out my summer shorts, I appear to be hearing wind and rain outside. So I'm just checking, I've got all the pattern pieces, the skirt front, the skirt side front, the skirt back and the skirt side back. The placket wrap and the placket facing. And of course the front and the back waistbands and the pocket. So I'm just laying out the centre back pieces. I pressed in uh, the pleats already and I decided to do French seams which aren't always recommended for curves but I'm going to wear these shorts and for doing my gardening in because I don't actually play tennis. And a French seam is a really nice strong seam. So I'm going to start by laying the wrong sides, laying the fabric wrong sides together and then you stitch the seam, fold it, press it between each stage um, and then stitch again and it creates a really nice strong seam. I've also pressed and I'm going to pin in the darts on the side back pieces so that I can stitch those at the same time. Join the side back pieces to the back. So I'm pinning each of the side back pieces to the centre back piece matching the notches. Wrong sides together because I'm going to do the French seams. It might look like there is a dark shadow kind of hanging over me and that is because there is a dark cloud hanging over me. So I'm starting on the um, front so uh, in exactly the same way as the back. So I've now got the skirt front and the skirt back all pinned together, ready for stitching. I've just seen my store of pins, which seem to be littering the table by my sewing machine um, and I found this lovely old cotton reel. I kind of hate using them but the colour 
blue Magella Kerr, it's called, is exactly the same colour as my shorts. So I'm threading up my lovely old singer 201K, uh, which belonged to my mother. Um, and these, these are actually known as the Rolls Royce or sewing machines. They only stopped manufacturing them because they were so expensive to manufacture. Um, and it's just a lovely sewing machine with a lot of nostalgic um, value to me as well. So I'm not taking all the seam allowance because these are um, French seams. So I'm currently stitching wrong side to wrong side. And then I'm going to turn out press and stitch again to enclose the raw edges. Just snipping off the ends of the threads. And I'm trying to be good and put pins back in Foxy rather than scatter them on the table. Just peeking out into the garden to see what the weather's like on this summer jubilee weekend as I'm making my summer shorts. I'm doing this on the ironing board because I can then I'm going to iron them flat. But also it's not that good an idea because I want all these little bits are stuck to the ironing board. But I never learn. I never learn to do it. So I've cut all the edges down. Doing yes. each seam flat. Get really nice crisp edges. And then I'm going to turn it to enclose and make sure that I iron and flat and this gives it a really neat finish and a really strong finish too on the edge of my fingers with the steam there so then I'm going to carry on and do this for your turn because you think oh well now it's like it's actually it does help to get a nice crisp edge here when you turn. As you can see, otherwise, um, this is when I haven't pressed flat before I turn it. Um, and you can see that it's just a bit... I mean, I could fiddle it like that, I guess, all the way along, but it still wouldn't... It wouldn't have a kind of nice crisp edge. The edge here is already... Is much crisper and therefore I can iron it and get it really nice. Really nice and flat and crisp and not rolled when you. It's of course trickier doing curves like the crotch area here but it can still be done. To iron my fingers, of course. Just 
こう窒素中毒こう深くなっていて The here is the front seam and what I want to do I'm going to stitch the seam really carefully to make sure if you can see that these pleats either side I want them to meet exactly exactly like that in the middle So now I'm doing the second part of the French seaming, um, which is to sew all the right sides together. So now the raw edges are going to be nicely enclosed for a really strong seam. Um, just going round the centre front here, around the curve of the crotch, the shorts. I didn't realise till I filmed myself how close I let my fingers get to the needle. It's amazing that no terrible accident has ever happened really. And that's the right side with the seam done. So I'm just giving the pleats another press uh, to make sure that they are lying really flat with no kind of little baggy bits uh, before I do the top stitching and they meet really nicely. And I'm just going to, I'm just measuring them as well to make sure that they are exactly the right width before I top stitch. And then once I'm really happy that everything's all right, I'm just going to press them all really nice, crisp and flat along the crease line. And I'm going to top stitch just along each pleat and you do two little parallel rows of top stitching about six millimeters apart um, and not all the way down obviously because you want the pleats to flare out they're stitched to about a third of the way down um, and there's a marking on the pattern to show exactly where you stitch to It might seem like there's a lot of pressing, but that's pleats for you. So the centre pleats are pressed in towards each other and then the side pleats each side. And then it's time to do the top stitching, which um, I did really slowly and carefully because um, you, you want it to be about six millimetres from all the crease lines in two nice um, parallel rows. A 
and at the end of each row about a third of the way down the shorts you turn it um, and then just um, stitch a tiny um, little row at the end and then turn it again and come back up the other side of the crease. So I'm just pinning the placket pieces onto the left side of the skirt where I've left an opening for them. And then stitching them down right sides together onto that left opening edge. So I'm just going to pink the edges so the raw edges of each side of the placket are turned under and then the whole thing pressed down along the seam lines folded in half and um, I'll just be hem stitching along that edge to the line of machine stitching I'm just pinning it in place and you can see what the placket looks like with one side folded over the other. Hand stitching still to be done on the inside. And then I'll do a line of machine stitching just at the bottom edge of the placket to secure it and that's where the facing where the fastenings will go and now we're on to the pocket so the pocket is cut to the fold in one long strip and the top edge is pinned to the left side of the skirt, right side to right side, and then I'll machine stitch. So just stitching the sides of the pocket together now. And that's how it looks on the inside and if I pull out that edge you can just see so that kind of loose edge will be caught sort of tucked into the waistband and from the right side that's how the pocket is going to look on the shorts so now I'm doing the waistband and I'm just pressing some fusible interfacing um, onto it to secure it and then folding it over right sides to right sides and then stitching up the ends and then stitching the whole thing to the inside of the shorts folding over to the wrong side and then I'll hand stitch and here I am going out into the garden braving the elements with my furry friend to start my hand stitching but it was a bit chilly so I came back indoors I really enjoy hand stitching, it's one of my favourite parts of the whole process. Especially when I'm sitting with my furry friend. And here I am. Why are English summer bank holidays like this? Here I am uh, braving the outdoors 
in my shorts with my Jubilee flag. Uh, I thought this had a kind of comedy value seeing me wrestle in a gale trying to look kind of festive and jubilee like I did my best. So I'm back in the warm now but I really do love my 40s tennis shorts. Um, they're such a pretty and flattering shape and I can even imagine them made up in a slightly heavier fabric and lengthened to make culottes for the winter. I also saw a glimpse of my project for next Friday which is the 1940s colour block tie front crop top. I hope you enjoyed watching me making my 1940s Jubilee tennis shorts and if you'd like to join me on more sewing adventures please subscribe and i'll be releasing a new video every friday so till then bye